For the second straight night, we've got what I would call affordable aces in MLB DFS. We got guys with big strikeout upside who you don't have to break the bank to get. Guys in the low 10,000 range, high 9,000 range who legitimately have the ability to get you double digit strikeouts on a somewhat regular basis. And I love those scenarios. I love guys with massive upside where I can still get to fun hitters. I think that's what we have for today. We'll see what roster rates wind up settling out as because that may force you to deviate and do some different stuff. But I do think you've got ways to play things here, even if that does happen. So a fun slate for MLB DFS. Let's dive on in now and get you all set. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Here to break down Wednesday's 10-game main slate. We're locked set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. The rain will be arriving in Cleveland tonight for the Guardians and the Rangers. I'm just not sure when. Looks like it'll be after the game, but check back on that later to make sure that remains true because I do love Shane Bieber in that game. Rain also seems decently likely in Chicago for the White Sox and Dodgers. There's a shot they could delay it and play later, but obviously that depends on patience. That depends on um, the timing of the rain, stuff like that. So check back on that one later. Check back on the timing of the rain for the White Sox and Dodgers, Guardians and Rangers. Those are the two games that do have some potential funkiness in the cards for tonight. We'll take a look at the pitching preview in just one second, but first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts, because our PGA podcast for this week is posted myself and Brandon Gadula breaking down the field for the RBC Canadian Open. Uh, it's a very interesting field in terms of having a lot of really good studs, but it falls off after that. So we broke down what that means for roster construction and much more. Get that by searching for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. The NBA Finals are here, and you can play a free Daily Fantasy Challenge with a $10,000 prize pool. It is the Body Armor Inside Edge Challenge, and it is easy to play. To set your five-player lineup while staying under the salary cap, take advantage of the MVP, the star, and uh, the pro positions to get uh, point multipliers and two utility players. If your team scores enough fantasy points, you will be eligible to win part of the $10,000 prize pool. The Body Armor Inside Edge Contest is for Game 3 of the series, which is tonight. So make sure to enter before then. You can sign up for the free contest at FanDuel.com slash league slash body armor again that's fanduel.com slash league slash body armor make sure to play this free dfs contest for a chance to win ten thousand dollars in prizes pitching preview for this wednesday main slate nestor cortez is facing the twins he is eleven thousand dollars followed by aaron nola at 10-2 on fanduel sean Manaya checks in at ten thousand dollars shane bieber 97 chris bassett is 95 we got Tony Gonsolin facing the White Sox in 94. Nathan Eovaldi's with 92. Johnny Cueto facing the Dodgers in 9,000. With Dane Dunning, Corey Kluber, Adrian Hauser, Jordan Lyles, and Marcus Stroman, the others, at $8,000 or higher. The top arm for tonight feels pretty obvious, but it's obvious for a reason. That's going to be Shane Bieber going up against the Rays. Bieber's full season numbers are just okay. A 25% strikeout rate, which is not even a top five mark on this slate in each guy's most relevant sample. But that number is misleading. He had one start where he was struggling. He had no strikeouts and 21 batters faced. If you omit that one start, his strikeout rate goes up to 27%. Now, I don't think you should do that because the extremes count as well. But the full season numbers will downplay his single game upside. We saw Bieber get 11 strikeouts last time out. He had 10, two starts before that. And he's also made just three starts at home this entire year. One of them was that no strikeout game. So obviously home doesn't cure everything. But another one was when he hit the double digit strikeout mark for the first time. And Bieber's been taking advantage of good matchups. But he gets another one tonight. Facing the Rangers, 24% strikeout rate against righties in their current active roster. 6% walk rate, 91 WRC+. plus. I've got Bieber projected for 100 pitches which puts his strikeout projection at 6.9, which ranks fourth on the slate. That is the highest of all the guys who are at home for tonight. So Bieber checks every box for me, and he is just $9,700. You're getting a guy who can get you double-digit strikeouts 
for $9,700, I'm going to take that pretty much every time. So to me, Shane Bieber, rock solid play and the definitive top arm of the night. I'm going to put Aaron Nola second. He is still having issues with his results, which will burn you at times. But the upside is there, and it is really nice. He's facing the Brewers on the road. Nola, in the past, has had some pretty rough home road splits. But those haven't popped up as much this year. We've had Nola get eight-plus strikeouts in three of his five road starts, and he's hit that mark in two out of six starts at home. So he's been not better on the road, but like he's been just as good on the road. He has been better technically, but like I wouldn't expect to be better going forward. And the results have been good too on the road. Nola does seem like he's making some tweaks due to the bad results he has had. He's throwing a sinker more often over his past six starts, and that has hurt his strikeout rate a bit, but not too much. Strikeout rate in that time is still 29% with a 3% walk rate. The batted ball data is not pristine, so it's possible the results continue to lag behind the seller peripherals. But the upside in the stretch has been really, really good. Nola held the Braves to one run across eight in the third innings on the road. He had 10 strikeouts there. He had eight against the Dodgers on the road, too. The Brewers, not bad, but not quite on that level in terms of the Dodgers and the Braves. A 103 WRC plus against righties, 24% strikeout rate. So I know the risks with Nola do still exist, and they've been present because he has still had some bad results. I'm just okay accepting them, and I think the upside here makes it worth it. So Aaron Nola, to me, a solid, solid option, the guy I will go to behind Shane Bieber. Now, Nola is higher salary than Bieber, and I don't feel as good about him, but if that leads to his being under-rostered relative to Bieber, if you think that Bieber is too chalky, I think Noel's a fine pivot. He's not going to go overlooked, but um, he should be much lower rostered due to the fact that he is higher salaried and on the road, which should, you know, tie things down a bit for Noel from a roster rate perspective. I do like the stud pitchers a lot tonight. I'm very into them, but there is a value guy I am willing to use despite that. And that guy is Marcus Stroman at $8,300. And I actually feel pretty good about Stroman. And it's not just the matchup. He gets Baltimore. They're a better league average team against righties. So it's not necessarily a plus spot from that perspective. This is really just about Stroman. He missed a decent chunk of time due to COVID-19. But since he's returned, Stroman has been leaning way more on his slider and less on his sinker. I love that switch because sliders are great. Uh, Sinkers suck for strikeouts and DFS. That slider is his best pitch, according to the numbers of baseball savant. The results haven't always been good, but the peripherals have been. In those four starts, Stroman has a 3.32 skill interactive ERA with a 26% strikeout rate. His walk rate is 6%. The fly ball rate has come up. It is 32%. So I don't know if this switch is permanent where he could always go back to that sinker. That could happen for sure. But for now, I'm on board. Uh, We saw Stroman get seven strikeouts in, in the rough start last week. He had eight against the Reds, six against Arizona. And he shut down the Brewers in his final start before COVID, where he also used that slider a lot there. So I could be too high on Stroman here. He could switch back to using that sinker more, but he has upside as long as he is using that slider. So I actually do like him enough to use him. A lot of times where we have this many studs on a slate, I might not get to the value play I'll talk about, might not use him. I will tonight, I think. I think that I like Stroman enough to go there, use the excess salary on some of the stacks. I think there's enough in Stroman's profile to justify that. So Stroman, to me, will be behind Nola, will be behind Bieber, but very much on the radar as a value play for today. Let's dive into the stacks. Mentioned that I could use some extra salary potentially there um, via going with someone like Stroman. I would allocate that towards the Yankees first and foremost. They're facing Chris Archer, who's gotten good results recently, and I think that's a product of the teams he has faced. So I like the Yankees here. Archer has let up just six earned runs in his past four outings. He let up just one in three of those four outings. But all four of those games were plus matchups. He faced the A's, the Royals, and then the Tigers twice. You'd expect someone facing that slate of teams to do well in those matchups. And the results were good. The peripherals weren't quite as flattering. The most relevant sample on Archer is seven starts since he started to mix in, mix in a changeup more often. His skill interactive ERA in that time is 4.67 with an 18% strikeout rate, 43% hard hit rate, and a 40% fly ball rate. Basically, he's living dangerously right now, and he just hasn't faced any teams good enough to take advantage of what he's doing. 
I think the Yankees are dangerous enough once again right now. Their active roster has a 121 WRC plus against righties. They have a 178 ISO. So the Twins are letting Archer go through the order just twice, and the Twins' bullpen is pretty solid. So the hope here is that the Yankees' offense will have done enough damage where the Twins aren't putting their best guys out there in the middle innings after Archer leaves. So I like the Yankees a lot here, and we'll be in on them tonight. I have no lingering reservations about Giancarlo Stanton off his injury. Had a home run last night. In his first game back, he put two balls in play. Uh, both of them were barreled. Only one of them was a hit. Uh, the other one was, a, uh, one was a double, one was an out. But he's fine. Uh, Stanton, I think the salary right now, where it is, going to go up $3,500. You're not going to get him for thirty five dollars too often this year. So I would say take advantage of that. Uh, Rizzo is also pretty low salaried. So the Yankees, to me, the top stack on the main slate. Jared Koenig is making his big league debut for the A's tonight. Uh, he's a former indie baller. It's his age 28 season. So pretty cool to see a guy go through all that and finally get the call uh, here in 2022. I'm not sure what to make of him. I do think we should stack the Braves against him, though. Just it's a, there is some risk here for sure. Koenig spent last year in double A. He had a 10% swing and strike rate there with a 20% strikeout rate. He's been better in triple A this year with a 30% strikeout rate. But his swing and strike rate is still 12%. That means his strikeout rate in the majors is probably going to settle in around 20% or so. And it could be a bit lower because the bats, uh, Derek Carty's projections, have him projected for a 17% strikeout rate as a starter. So let's bump that up to 20%, just to be generous. Just bump it up uh, based on what he's done in AAA. If the fly ball rate, which was 37% for Koenig and AAA, follows into the majors, and he has a 20% strikeout rate, we'll probably be able to stack good teams against him, assuming those two numbers are where he settles in. The Braves are a very good team. They have a 122 WRC plus against lefties, a 213 ISO. That is the best mark on the slate. Plus, this is the best park for pitcher for hitting on the main slate. It is also the second warmest. So I do worry about stacking against guys when the opposing hitters have never seen them before. And that could be one issue here, but I think the other factors line up well enough to make it a worthwhile stack. So to me, the Braves definitively the number two stack behind the Yankees. If you want to put them first, no pushback. The reason I put them lower is that that factor of no familiarity of the guy who was an indie baller, then a double A, then a triple A that could potentially pose an issue uh, to hitters the first time that they see him. I'm not sure if William Contreras will play, um, but even though his salary seems really high for a guy likely to bat low in the order, I want to put my like stamp of approval on him. Like, It's not often you see guys with a super high salary low in the order be worthwhile for DFS. I think Contreras is that guy. He has a 50% hard hit rate this year with a 16% barrel rate. Stupid numbers. And it's not a huge surprise because we saw him break out last year in AAA. He had a 226 ISO there. It was 184 in the majors. So we see him and Darno in the lineup a lot together, uh, but I hope they do that again tonight. I really do think that Contreras is legit. So again, $3,700 batting potentially eighth or seventh or so, that's usually not going to fly, but I'm still willing to do it here. So Contreras... Maybe he's better suited if you're going with like a uh, with a Stroman lineup. But I did want to say that like even though it's a bit counter what we usually do, I'm okay with him for sure. Like officially giving the stamp of approval for Contreras for today. For our third stack, I never really want to go to San Francisco. It's a wretched park for offense. But they're facing Antonio Sensatella today. So the Giants are high on my list for once tonight. Sensatella really struggling this year. His ERA is 5.40. Skill Interactive ERA is 5.12. And that Skill Interactive ERA gets where it's at due to a crazy low strikeout rate, just 9%. Sensatella has gotten by in the past despite the low strikeout rates, but he did that mostly because he had high ground ball rates, getting a lot of grounders. That's not happening this year. His ground ball rate is 42%. Now, most of that is going to line drives. And a line drive rate takes longer to stabilize than a ground ball rate or a fly ball rate. So I'd expect the ground ball rate to increase as the year goes along, as those line drives aren't always going to be line drives. But will it get back to where it was? Go up 10 percentage points? It'll need to if he wants to survive with the way things are going right now. His expected ERA 
is 7.24, which is way too high for him to get by. And this translates to when he's on the road too. Cincinnati has had two starts outside of Coors Field this year, and he let up five earned runs in both those. One of those was against a terrible Tigers offense. The other was against this very same Giants team in San Francisco. That was back on May 10th. He faced them again on May 16th. Uh, he went two innings and then left due to an injury. So that's actually a good amount of familiarity here. Not as much as you typically get for a guy who's faced a team twice, but I think we should, you know, um, suck it up here and stack the Giants despite the terrible, terrible park for offense. It's not a great park for offense or great slate for offense in terms of park factors in general. So the opportunity cost is a bit lower. That does help me feel better about this one for today. It does help here that righties are hitting Sensatella especially hard this year because the concern with the Giants is always that a lefty will use a lefty. They'll get yanked once the right-handed starter is out. But here, we can go with the righties too. Uh, Wilmer Flores, Evan Longoria, assuming that they start, are good building blocks here. Flores went deep again last night. Uh, both those guys have hit righties well. I might just wind up building around those two, making them kind of the core plays, assuming that they play. Uh, but I think that because we can feel more secure in them playing the entire game, I think that Flores and Longoria wind up being really good focal points for stacking. So I think to me, uh, guys I want to build around, Evan Longoria, Wilmer Flores, because their righties will stay in the game for the entirety of it. Let's go now to things to watch. I am broadly very in on Sean Manaya, and I do like his upside against the Mets, but he lets up a lot of hard contact and fly balls, and the Mets can generate those things. So I'm not going to cross off Manaya, but I do feel good putting him below Bieber and Nola, and honestly, I might go Stroman above him too. I think that the one guy I might put, the one other stud I might put above uh, Stroman would probably be Cortez just because he's really good. Obviously, the Twins getting healthier uh, against lefties right now, but they're still not a threatening matchup by any means. So I would say to me, Bieber, then Nola, then probably going Cortez, and then that's where I get to Stroman as being the next guy up. Uh, Manaya below all of them for me, despite the fact I broadly am very on board with what he does. We talked about the Red Sox yesterday against Reed Detmers, uh, wound up being Jose Suarez facing them. It is Detmers for today, confirmed. I'm still on board with stacking against him. I think I'd put them below the other three teams. So below the Giants, below um, the other teams we talked about, the Braves uh, and the Yankees. I forgot already who we're talking about. So Yankees, Braves, Giants, and then probably Red Sox number four. But they're a rock solid four, like very much in the same tier as those other teams. And one I'd be very willing to go to. Just want to mention that again, that... Um, Against Detmer is the Red Sox, very stackable. If they do wind up playing in Chicago, playing through that rain, I do like stacking the Dodgers tonight. They're facing Johnny Cueto, who has a 2.92 ERA in four starts, but the peripherals, you know, they're not bad, but they do show some cracks with a 42% hard hit rate. The ground ball rate is high, but minimal strikeouts, lots of hard contact. Um, I think that that can allow us to go at them if the weather allows. So the Dodgers, to me, in play for stacking if we get the green light on the weather there, despite the fact that Cueto is not a perfect stacking candidate. Let's finish up here with some home run calls for tonight. The boring one, I'll go with the guy we discussed earlier on, Giancarlo Stanton, just hitting the heck out of the ball, as he always does, coming off that injury. No concerns about him. I think that it's arrows up, as always. So Giancarlo Stanton, $3,500. Just keep on using him there while you still can. The more fun one, I'm going to go with Enrique Hernandez, uh, probably going to hit leadoff for tonight, if I had to guess, given that it is a lefty. Hernandez hasn't gone deep in a bit. Uh, last home run for him was back on May 29th, but facing a lefty, he gives up a lot of hard contact and a lot of fly balls. Um, we get Kike back in Los Angeles, so I guess Anaheim back in Southern California, which is kind of fun, so a little bit of a homecoming narrative there. Either way, uh, home run calls for today, Giancarlo Stanton and Kike Hernandez. That is all that we have here for today on the Solo Shot. As mentioned, our PGA DFS podcast for the RBC Canadian Open is posted. Check that out on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you. 
with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again on Thursday for another slate of MLB DFS. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.